call the member for Canberra. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you to the member for Newcastle for bringing forward this motion. She has been advocating for an expansion to public housing in Australia throughout her time in parliament, and that continues today. I had the opportunity to speak about social housing and public housing in June on a matter of public importance. And two months later, Labor is still calling for this government to get their act together with a proper plan that will put roofs over people's heads while creating jobs. Put simply, the massive need for government stimulus in our ailing economy, the Morrison government must build and upgrade the public housing, social housing and affordable housing stock across Australia. When I spoke on this issue in June, the government had just announced their home builder program. The lack of ambition in this plan is staggering. $688 million for the wealthiest fifths of Australians to renovate their houses in ways that they were already doing. Compare that to Labor's $5.6 billion investment in social housing when the global financial crisis hit. The Morrison government has provided one-tenth of the housing construction stimulus that Labor delivered during the GFC, despite the fact that the impact of the COVID-19 downturn will dwarf the impact of the GFC. I can't think of a better summation of the difference in ideology of a coalition government versus a Labor government. In crisis, Labor stands up for all Australians and ensures that our most vulnerable and least well-off are supported, those who need it most. In crisis, this government does what it can to pass the buck, and that is what they are doing now. The pandemic has made it clearer than ever that safe and secure housing is fundamental to health and safety of human beings. Our homes have become our sanctuaries. But of course, you can't quarantine or isolate if you don't have a home. You can't quarantine or isolate if your home isn't safe. And for the 140,000 Australians on social housing wait lists across Australia, their ability to quarantine or, quarantine or isolate is not guaranteed. For those living in dilapidated social housing, their ability to quarantine or isolate in safe and secure housing is not guaranteed. And we saw this in the bushfires as well, that those most vulnerable were less able to cope with the health impacts of the um, the, the smoke crisis we had here in, in Canberra, where people living in public housing couldn't afford to air condition their homes and were staying in homes that were, frankly, not safe. In the face of the first Australian recession in 30 years, Labor has called on the coalition government to stimulate the COVID-affected economy by building social housing. Our Shadow Minister for Housing and Homelessness, Jason Clare, the member for Blacksland, called on the Morrison government to do several things, but the top two were, number one, construct more social housing, two, repair and maintain existing social housing. And this is exactly what needs to be done. The OECD has urged the government to do this. The Grattan Institute has urged the government to do this. ACOS have called for it. Homelessness Australia, National Shelter, Community Housing Industry of Australia, and the list goes on. The people who know about social housing know that it is underfunded and that responding to the social housing shortfall will massively stimulate the economy. Now the Master Builders Association have released forecasts that show that instead of building 170,000 homes this financial year, only 125,000 homes will be built. This is a significant drop. Further, the Master Builders Association have shown that the Home Builder Scheme has only increased this shortfall by 10,000 properties. Where is the ambition of this government? Where is the plan to save thousands of jobs that will go in the building and construction industry without adequate stimulus? Building and renovating social and public housing should be the Morrison government's plan. Subsidising renovations and builds that were already happening does not stimulate the economy. Instead, the government could be delivering on two critical objectives, stimulating jobs growth and creating more social housing. Another way the government could do this is by waiving the public housing debts for states and territories, like here in the ACT. Our ACT government is making the largest investment per capita in social housing in the country, and that was before COVID-19. Um, they have also now committed to build 260 new public housing dwellings if they form government at the October election. Um, but they have said that they could do even better if the federal government waives those debts. Because unlike this federal government, their priorities are in the right place. 
The priorities of this government should be housing for our most vulnerable and creating jobs as we try to recover the economy. Order.